Throughout the history of the NHL, we've seen some pretty monumental chokes when it comes to the big stage. And when talking about choking, there's no better way to start with than the 2012-2013 Toronto Maple Leafs. The 2012-2013 NHL season was only 48 games due to the lockout, and the Leafs were powered by their young core of 25-year-old Phil Kessel, 22-year-old Nazem Kadri, and 24-year-old goaltender James Reimer, who led Toronto to a 26-17-5 record and a playoff berth. Captained by Dion Phaneuf, the Maple Leafs finished 10th in the entire NHL and 6th in the NHL for goals 4. Going into the playoffs, the hopes for the Leafs weren't too high as they played a much more experienced Boston Bruins team who had just won the cup two years prior. The Leafs started the series by splitting the games in Boston with a 4-2 win in Game 2. Then they proceeded to drop the next two at home, letting the series fall to 3-1 in Boston's favor. But Toronto didn't quit, as they won both games 5 and 6 to bring this series to 7. With all of the momentum on their side and Leafs Nation behind them, the Maple Leafs headed into this game with confidence. But the Bruins got the scoring started early, with a Barkowski goal about 6 minutes into the game. Cody Franzen would then respond for the Leafs just 5 minutes later, and the first period would end at 1 apiece. The second period saw an early goal from Franzen for a second of the game. With a 2-1 lead, the Leafs started the third period on fire, with early goals from Kessel and Kadri to make it 4-1. Everything seemed to be going Toronto's way. With just under 10 minutes left, all the Leafs had to do was sit back and not let in three goals. Nathan Horton scored to make it 4-2. Nathan Horton one. Then Lucic scored with a minute and 20 seconds left in the game to make it 4-3. Bruins score! Like they did last With just under a minute left, Patrice Bergeron shoots one from the point, and it finds the back of the net, making it a tie game. Bruins have scored to tie the game! And it didn't take long for Bergeron and the Bruins to complete the comeback, as they scored about six minutes into overtime to advance to the next round. Patrice Bergeron, who tied the game and won it in overtime! This Game 7 choke started years and years of Maple Leaf choking, and it started one of the longest running memes in the NHL. And although this choke was bad, it doesn't even compare to the Red Wings in the 2006 playoffs. With 124 points, a 58-16-8 record, the President's Trophy, and four 80-point scorers, the 2005-2006 Red Wings were no joke. The high-powered offense of Pavel Datsuk, Henrik Zetterberg, and Brennan Shanahan, and elite defense and goaltending from Nicholas Lidstrom and Manny Legacy led the Red Wings to the franchise's second best season in history. With a roster as good as the Red Wings had, the regular season seemed to be a cakewalk. The Detroit Red Wings faced the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs. Despite Edmonton's lower point total of 95 compared to Detroit's 124, the series proved to be more challenging than anticipated. In Game 1, Detroit secured a 3-2 double overtime victory, with Oilers goalie Dwayne Rolison making an impressive 54 saves. Rolison's stellar performance continued throughout the series, allowing Edmonton to tie the series in Game 2 with a 4-2 win and take the lead with a 4-3 double overtime win. Concerns about Manny Legacy's lack of experience became evident as the series progressed. Although Detroit dominated the games, Legacy would often concede untimely goals, while Rolison single-handedly kept Edmonton in the series. Nonetheless, the Red Wings displayed their strength in Game 4, reclaiming home ice advantage with a 4-2 victory. Despite the unexpected difficulties, Detroit still had the opportunity to avoid ultimate disaster. Unfortunately, Rolison continued to outshine Legacy, leading the Oilers to a 3-2 win in Game 5 with 30 saves while Legacy only made 16. In Game 6, the Wings held a 3-2 lead with less than 4 minutes remaining. However, the Oilers rallied and scored 2 goals, taking the lead with just over a minute left. Thus, the Wings were upset in 6 games. Despite Detroit's dominance throughout the regular season and series, they encountered the classic scenario of facing a hot goalie who eventually stole the series for a much inferior Edmonton Oilers team. Although many teams have disappointed in the first round, there have been few teams in NHL history that did what the 2013-2014 Sharks did in the playoffs.
The 2013-2014 season presented the San Jose Sharks with immense promise and high expectations. Led by their talented roster, including seasoned veterans like Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, and Dan Boyle, as well as emerging stars such as Logan Couture and Tomas Hurdle. The Sharks had a solid regular season, finishing with an impressive 111 points, securing a playoff spot. Their potent offense, bolstered by the likes of Joe Pavelski and Brent Burns, combined with solid goaltending from Antti Niemi, had fans and analysts alike believing that this could finally be the year for the Sharks to make a deep playoff run and contend for the Stanley Cup. Entering the playoffs as the second seed in the Western Conference, the Sharks faced off against their California rival, the Los Angeles Kings. San Jose came out the gates firing on all cylinders, taking a commanding 3-0 series lead. The team's dynamic offensive play, coupled with strong defensive efforts led by Mark Edward Vlasic and Brad Stewart, had them poised for a quick series victory and a ticket to the next round. However, little did the Sharks know that their fortunes were about to take an unexpected turn. In a stunning twist of fate, the Kings mounted an incredible comeback, refusing to go down without a fight. Led by the outstanding play of goaltender Jonathan Quick and the relentless determination of their roster, the Kings clawed their way back into the series game by game. As the series progressed, the Sharks' once potent offense seemed to sputter, struggling to find the back of the net. Their power play faltered at a critical time, failing to capitalize on crucial opportunities. The team's confidence began to waver, while the Kings gained momentum and confidence with each victory. Game 7 arrived with a sense of tension and anxiety. The Sharks, who were seemingly in control just a few games earlier, faced a determined and resurgent Kings team. Despite a valiant effort, San Jose could not halt the Kings' onslaught. Los Angeles completed their historic comeback, defeating the Sharks in heartbreaking fashion and eliminating them from the playoffs. The Sharks are the most recent team to blow a 3-0 lead, but the 2010 Boston Bruins did it in a much more disastrous fashion. Led by head coach Claude Julien, the Bruins showcased their trademark physicality, defensive prowess, and determination throughout the 2010 season. The team boasted an impressive roster that included renowned players such as Zidane Chara, Patrice Bergeron, and Tim Thomas, who would later become key contributors in their successful season. The regular season started with the Bruins setting a solid foundation, finishing third in the Northeast Division with a 39-30-13 record. Despite facing challenges along the way, including injuries to key players, the Bruins displayed resilience and determination, always finding a way to complete and secure crucial victories. Their strong performance during the regular season set the stage for what they hoped to be an eventful and memorable playoff run. The playoff run was indeed memorable, but for the wrong reasons. The Bruins were set to face the Philadelphia Flyers after defeating the Sabres in six games. After an impressive start building a commanding 3-0 series lead, it seemed like the Bruins were destined for a spot in the conference finals. However, their fortunes quickly turned as the Flyers mounted a remarkable comeback, taking advantage of the Bruins' defensive lapses and exploiting their weaknesses. Despite the Bruins' solid defensive unit and experienced key players, they struggled to maintain composure and failed to close out the series. Not only did the Bruins blow a 3-0 series lead, they blew a 3-0 lead in Game 7. The turn of events was disappointing and marked a painful end to a promising playoff run. Although it's hard to beat a 3-0 choke, the Bruins can at least say that they won a game, which cannot be said for the 2019 Tampa Bay Lightning. The 2019 season for the Tampa Bay Lightning will forever be remembered as a profound disappointment. Entering the year as one of the favorites to contend for the Stanley Cup, the Lightning showcased exceptional talent and dominance throughout the regular season. Led by head coach John Cooper, the team boasted an electrifying roster. With an impressive 62 wins and only 16 losses, the Lightning tied an NHL record for most wins in a single season. However, as the playoffs arrived, the Lightning's dominance took an unexpected and devastating turn. In the first round, they faced the Columbus Blue Jackets, a team who barely secured a playoff spot. Despite their regular season domination, the Lightning were shockingly swept in a stunning 4-0 series defeat. It was an unprecedented collapse, leaving fans and analysts baffled. The Lightning's struggles in the playoffs can be attributed to various factors, 
They could not replicate their regular season success, faltering in critical moments, and facing strong opposition from the hungry Columbus Blue Jackets. Goaltender Andre Vasilevsky, who had a stellar regular season, struggled to find his form, and the high-powered offense was stifled by Columbus's tenacious defense and outstanding goaltender. The disappointing end of the season left the Lightning and their fans in disbelief. The 2018-2019 Lightning would have been the worst choke of all time if it weren't for the 2022-2023 Boston Bruins losing to the Florida Panthers. The Bruins' 2022-2023 season was one to remember. Finishing with the most wins in NHL history with 65, the most points in history with 135, and the least amount of losses in an 82-game season, the Bruins put together one of the greatest regular seasons of all time. Led by the elite goaltending duo of Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman, a potent offense of David Pasternak, Brad Marchand, and Patrice Bergeron, and the defensive backbone of Charlie McAvoy, it's no wonder why the Bruins were so dominant. However, going into the playoffs, the players couldn't care less about the records. Brad Marchand said in an ESPN interview, People have talked a lot about some of these records that we could potentially hit or we have hit. Nobody cares about those in this room. We could care less about any of these regular season records because they really don't mean anything. Obviously, anything less than a Stanley Cup victory would be seen as a disappointment. The Bruins got an excellent start to the playoffs as they took a 3-1 lead on the worst team to make the playoffs, the Florida Panthers. They then lost the next three games of the season, two being in overtime, and Game 7 having a lead with less than a minute left. Failure to close out games and capitalize on prime scoring opportunities eventually led to the demise of statistically the greatest team of all time. 